Welcome to Bio Origin. Before watching this video, make sure you've watched part 1 of the process to understand what's happening next. After 5 to 10 days, depending on the temperature and humidity, you will notice a thin layer of slimy scum on top of the water inside the jar. A second larger layer of the jar contents should be less cloudy water than it was originally. And at the bottom of the jar you should see a settling layer of starch. The smell should slightly resemble yogurt or fermented milk, but don't stress if it smells different to you. Through a cheesecloth or a sieve, strain the contents of the jar to get rid of some of the larger particles. Some of the water evaporates during phase 1, but that's okay. We have plenty still. This is now a bacteria-infected solution. In this solution, we've cultured many species of bacteria, not just the one we want. So our next step is to select only the one we want to continue and flourish. We do that by changing the food source from starch, which is the base food for almost all bacteria, to milk, which is preferred mainly by the lactobacillus. I measure one part of the solution and mix it with 10 parts of milk. The lactobacillus is not so picky, so any milk will do. The source of the milk is also not important, so you can use cow milk, goat milk, powdered milk, or anything else. But the quality of the milk you use will determine the quality of the cheese you get at the end. You can use skimmed milk to get a mostly fat-free cheese or full cream milk to get a creamier, fuller cheese. For this batch, I poured half a glass of bacteria-infected solution in a plastic container. Then added five glasses of store-bought milk over it. A clay or even glass container would be more preferable, but plastic was what I had on hand, so plastic it was. Again, I need at least one-third of the container empty, so the air would be present. I then put the cover loosely on top of it. Do not fasten the container's cover or make it airtight in any way. Just put it on loosely to allow airflow. Again, keep the container in a cool dark place and leave it for the next phase of the process to take place. It's preferable if the container and its contents are not disturbed at all during this phase. Five to ten days later, again, depending on the temperature and humidity, the solution will turn into two distinct layers. A solid layer, which is the cheese, and a liquid layer, the lactobacillus. In the liquid layer, you might see some slime floating on top of the liquid, but don't worry about it, that's normal. Using a cheesecloth and a sieve, separate the cheese from the liquid, collecting the liquid. Put the sieve on another container, then add the cheesecloth on top of that. Pour all the contents through the cheesecloth. And keep it in the fridge for a couple of hours until all, or at least most of the liquid, has gone through. Next, use your hands to squeeze the cheesecloth and its contents to get the remaining liquid out. Inside the cheesecloth, you now have cheese. Add salt, herbs, and other ingredients to make the cheese exactly how you like it. Mix it well and taste frequently till you're satisfied with the results. This is natural cheese, so don't expect it to keep for a month or two. This cheese can usually be stored in the fridge for up to one week. The liquid you gathered is the lactobacillus solution. can be added to your food or used in any other way to supplement your body with the much needed probiotics.
for its benefits, storage and uses with plants, keep watching. There are two ways to store lactic acid bacteria or lactobacillus. The first, and easier in most cases, is to just put the bottle as is in the fridge. This will cause the bacteria to go dormant until you need to use it. Storing the lactobacillus in the fridge makes the bacteria viable for up to one year. The second way to store lactobacillus is to mix it in a one-to-one -one ratio by volume with unsulfured molasses. That is, if the lactobacillus solution turned out to be half a liter, you should add half a liter of molasses to it. In this case, store it at room temperature away from direct sunlight. The molasses acts as a food source for the bacteria, so it will be alive and active inside the bottle. Storing lactobacillus in this manner should make it viable for up to three years. Keep in mind that the lactobacillus is a living thing. It breathes, eats, digests, and copulates in the microenvironment you gave it. That is, the bottle. All these functions produce gases, and they need to come out regularly. Do not put the bottle cap on tight. Just put it on loosely on the bottle and make sure there is room for any gases forming over time to come out. If you put a tight cap on the bottle, you might have a mini explosion on your hand when you try to open it. To use lactobacillus in gardening, I add one part of the lactobacillus solution to 20 parts of chlorine-free water. This becomes a strong lactobacillus solution that could be used in something like bokashi making, another Korean natural farming important component. For using lactobacillus in plant watering or as a foliar spray, we further dilute the strong solution we just spoke of, adding one tablespoon of it for every liter of chlorine-free water. That is about 4 tablespoons for every gallon of water. In this final form, the lactobacillus can be used as normal to water your plants. In this way, the lactobacillus helps the plants by digesting the soil the plant grows in, freeing more minerals and organic matter in the soil, making it available for the plant's use. Lactobacillus will also help compete with other bacteria and or pathogens in the soil, which should improve the overall plant health and nutritious value. Using the diluted lactobacillus solution as a foliar spray helps keep plant leaves healthy and looking well. Same as with the soil, lactobacillus on the leaves compete with the other bacteria and fungi living on the leaves' surface and stomata, keeping any pathogens or disease in check, and helping in clearing the leaves' pores from things that could hinder its photosynthetic operations. Take a minute and let me know in the comments what type of gardening you do and whether you're a natural gardener or do you use chemicals with your plants and let me know what is the problem you find most challenging with your plants. If you found this video useful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out when more videos are uploaded. Don't forget to tap the bell icon. If you know someone who'd benefit from the information in this video, please share it with them. See you next time.